Hello and good afternoon. Let's check my time. Okay, so today I'm going to make a video the quick and easy way, which is basically covering other people's material. I'll get right into it. Now, if you're interested in Philip Drujinin or Mud Flood or any of this historical stuff that revolves around Mud Flood, and you like that topic, if you actually look up Russian language videos on such subjects, particularly Tartaria and Mud Flood, then you'll find there's a whole world of content that you probably didn't know was available. You'll notice that when you watch a YouTube video, usually on the right side of a video, it, YouTube kind of recommends videos that you might be interested in. Well, I guarantee that if you start watching Russian language videos, even if you don't understand them, on subjects like Tartaria and Mud Flood, YouTube will start prompting you and showing you more videos that you might like to watch. Now, you won't understand these videos unless you speak Russian. I don't speak Russian. I'm actually working on it. Of course, learning a language takes years. But, um, you know, you'll at least see some of the pictures, and if they provide links in the description of you know, uh, books or, or you know, video uh, image galleries, you might be uh, surprised. And, um, well, anyway, I'm just going to get right into it. So this fellow here, I'll get the original Russian, is... <laughs> I'll just pause him. Uh, he even said his name. His channel is called Istorichesky Volnodumyets. And that translates to historical free thinker. He seems to have a popular channel. Another really great, popular Russian YouTube channel on mud flood and Tartaria, um, more on Tartaria, is Sergei Ignatenka. And I'll leave a link for his YouTube channel in the description below. Okay, um, so this Istorichesky Volnodumyets, he has. Uh, kind of like a Facebook account, which I'm going to take a look at. Um, and it's almost like the Russian version of Facebook. It's called Vkontakte, which means uh, something similar to Facebook. And that's what I'll be looking at today. I hope he doesn't mind. I actually haven't asked his permission yet. I certainly will after I make this video. Okay, so I'm going to click on this here. And I'll translate some of this into English, and we'll read some of it. So, uh, yeah, I guess he's got a way you can fund him. He's got his name there. So he's got some neat pictures. Again, generally, it's just more mud flood evidence. I think all of Russia is like this. It's not like new home development like you might see in North American cities. It's like... I think there's even cities there that haven't even been fully developed. That's a huge landmass from the, uh, you know, Moscow to the Pacific. That's one seventh of the world's landmass, which might be hard to get a, your head around. But think about that. We haven't even. How much do you know about that space of land, Transcaucasia, all the way over to practically Japan? So, anyway, how much do you know about that piece of land? It's the size of North America, but do you ever hear much about it? So think about that, too. Uh, sorry to be condescending. I'm not trying to. Okay, so anyway, this is kind of a lot of the same thing. Uh, but there's even better pictures on here. So I'll close this image. Uh, yeah, you can stop and pause these if you want to read some of this. It doesn't always translate so well. So this, the building of the State Archive of Krasnoyarsk territory. I'm not sure that's actually what it's pictures of. Yeah, you know, mud flood windows submerged in the ground. Obviously, somebody's stuccoed over top of it. Yeah, you know, there's there's so much of this, but the thing about Russia is that, like, not only are there mud flood buildings everywhere. You know, you can find that in any old North American city of, like, homes and, and banks. 
Okay, once again, I can only uh, record videos in five-minute segments because of the uh, trial version of video recording software I have. So I, I forget, I got cut off there, and I forget where I was. I forget when I got cut off. So anyway, um, the thing about Russia is that, like, there are not only, like, in North America, where there's homes and houses and maybe old parts of the city, like City Hall and, and old downtown you know, storefront businesses, like in North America, but Russia actually has a lot of apartment-sized buildings that are clearly from a mud flood era. There's a lot of this. If you look up, you know, Google Maps on Vladivostok, which is the far eastern part of the country, then there's actually, like, what I suppose gets labeled as Soviet-era apartment complexes. They're actually even older than that. And so even in Russia, you get like apartment complexes that are mud flood buildings, right? Okay, so here's some images here. If there was some kind of concise picture description that I could read into the video, I would. I'm not really seeing that in this particular case. Okay, this is neat. We've got some stamps in the stuck over concrete work. Okay, these are some street scenes. Oh, what did he say this was here? A little modern Ostrakhan. Ostrakhan. This is getting closer to like Uzbekistan, still part of Russia. So these are some modern day pictures of Ostrakhan. Ulitsa Krasnaya Neberezhanaya Ostrakhan. Ulitsa means street, same in Polish. I mean, so th this is my point, that in, in Russia and a lot of these cities, they have these old mud flood era buildings, but they haven't even been developed or dealt with yet. You could see something similar if you look up Kaliningrad, which is on the Baltic, which is not even in Russia. That's practically more like Poland. But, of course, Russia has a port city, kind of to the north of Poland on the Baltic, and Kaliningrad looks like this as well, like untouched, unrenovated, falling apart old mud flood buildings. They haven't even dealt with this stuff yet. Okay, so apparently that was Ostrakhan. Okay, let's get a name for this place. How much time do I have? Hello, this is Arkhangelsk. According to the official history, the building was built in two years. Let's just refresh that. It didn't take me back to where I was at. So, uh, Arkhangelsk. Okay, well, let's have a look at some of these pictures.
So here's a, apparently a distillery in the same city, Arkhangelsk. Oh, this one's really great. I'm going to try to look this up separately. What was, what was the name of this? Um, Radeski Monastery? Let's, let's see if we can get this in Russian, just so I can look it up later. Radeski Monastery. Okay, I'll stop doing this. I'll just try to read the English. But anyway... Some of this stuff looks abandoned. So, like, you go out in the woods in Russia or rural areas, this stuff is still sitting there. I don't know any place around where I live, which is southern Ontario, where you can just walk out into the woods and find stuff like this. There are ruins here and there, but nothing... At least to my knowledge, nothing like this. Oh, and, and, you know, check this out on the top. I'm not really going to go into detail, but, you know, people are talking about this. Is this collecting energy? What's this doing? This is the inside. Again, with a lot of these structures, you see kind of metallic supports, right? Some people might automatically draw conclusions that this is structural, although this isn't very thick. Right, this isn't exactly rebar, and why would you need to reinforce from this massive column to this side with metal? This metal seems to be going all the way around the perimeter. Not, all, not the perimeter, but this, this structure in here seems to be going all the way around, and there's probably, like, probably some kind of dome up top. And again, there's a lot of hanging, hanging rods. You'll see that in churches. You even see that... It's rare, but you'll even see that in churches in North America. I, re I remember going to an old Anglican church growing up when I was a kid, and you'll actually see rods dangling from the ceiling. I didn't know what they were growing up, but I, this is, this is something, something to keep your eyes open for. I know it's been touched on by other YouTubers. So I'm not the first one to say this. furnace. And here's probably from the ground looking up at the dome. You can see there's this, I don't know, metal rods that kind of go around this superstructure. And this is actually, looks like the dangling thing, even though we're not really seeing it. Just kind of dangling from the top of the dome. Or is it structural? It could be structural. I don't know. Uh, it looks like somebody named Nikolai, maybe? Nikolai wrote this. He graffitied his name on here. So somebody's climbed to the top. Looks a little dangerous, especially when it's slippery in wintertime. They've taken a picture of this. This forest is not that old. How old would you say those trees are? 50, 60 years old. Okay, so this was... What was the name? Radeski Monastery. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna wait till a separate video. I'm gonna cut it short here and record another segment. But this is in Ostrakhan. Okay, so this is in Ostrakhan. Okay, I just pulled it up here on Google Maps to show exactly where Ostrakhan is. It's pretty much at the southern end of Russia. Of 
course Russia goes way this way as well, but Russia close to the Caspian. So it's this Transcaucasian region. region. So this is Ostrakhan here. And uh, I think there's a, just a brief description, and you can pause it maybe. Uh, Ostrakhan is a city on the Volga River in southern Russia. It's known for the Ostrakhan Kremlin, which is kind of like city hall capital type of buildings. An expansive fortress built in the 1500s. Its grounds are home to several Russian Orthodox churches, including the five-domed Assumption Cathedral. The Museum of Military Glory displays weapons and artifacts from the war. The Ostrakhan Drama theater stages, uh, Russian and Shakespearean classics in an opulent 1880s auditorium. Well, I would certainly question 1880s. And this is the very picturesque uh, church, Ascension Cathedral, Cathedral, which the city is kind of known for. Okay, let's get back to the Istorichesky, Istorichesky Volnodumets. This is his channel. So he's got some postcards of Ostrakhan. Oh, I'm cutting it off on this side. It, it sort of starts off with Ostrakhan. Astrakhan. And and Han is an interesting word because it's kind of like the Tartarian Khanate. You have the word Khan or Hana or, you know, like Genghis Khan or the Golden Horde, right? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't want to go into that, but Han is definitely coming from that. And I've heard even people suggest that, you know, the word Cohen is kind of similar to the word Khan, right? Okay, Ostrakhan. Birja, what is that? What does that say? Anyway, interesting, a lot of these old par postcards have the same, um, same script. They almost look like they're all printed from the same place, these old 1860s ones. Anyway, clearly here's a lot of mud. So this place is flooded, so... This is almost uh, some evidence here, right? This is a great picture. I feel sorry for these people having to clean up this mess. Birja, Birja if I'm reading that correctly. Birja, maybe that's a region of Ostrakhan. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. Okay, Ostrakhan, Birja, Kremlia. So this is like the Kremlin building. This is the fortress. And, uh, what does this say? Fujnoi Storone. Something like that. You know, look at this. Look at this up the side of it. Uneven levels of inundation of mud. Not on this side, and not even a, a level area on this side. And, I don't know, this is exposed, but this mud kind of runs up the side. Was this dug out? What's going on here? Um, this looks almost like that Google Maps image I showed earlier. Let's see. Kind of neat, you've got it bricked up on the bottom of the foundation, and then there's a bit of a different style of stucco almost. I don't know what you call this on the side, but it changes from here to here. This is uh, this is Ostrakhan. Uh, what does this say? Anyway, this looks a little bit like a mosque. I don't know what this is. And actually, this is interesting because I watched a video on Ostrakhan, and even today, even today, I think Ostrakhan. Um, has a mixture of like Orthodox Christianity and Islam. I think there's Muslim people in Ostrakhan as well. I gotta check up on that one ago I, again though. Might be thinking of a different city. Okay. Oh, I cut it off at the top. There's a bit of a weather vane at the top here, on the top of this dome. It's not that. Okay. Uh, they keep making another part here. I just started recording again. Okay, so I wish I had a, a description as to what this building is. But I mean, check this out. 
I mean, I've seen these... I don't even know what to call them. Like, telephone poles with these horizontal bars on it. But look, there's no wires on it. And this is, this is not... And people are calling these, like, free energy collecting devices or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what they are. But look, there's no wires. There's no wires running along this. What are these things? Okay, again, I cut, I cut, there's a cross. I cut it off the top. There's a cross on the top of this church. Big, massive entranceway. And that is huge. We don't see this so much in North America with our mud flood buildings and old churches, but Russia, they have like these massive entrances. You know, was that made for humans? This, I know that sounds crazy. A lot of people almost have to predicate what they say before they say it, saying, oh, yeah, this sounds crazy. But yeah, I mean, this was this built for people? Okay. Uh, in Krapivne of the Tula region, the same is worth... Okay, I don't know if that's the area that it's in. Okay, Ostrakhan. I can reduce the size of this. There, okay, that's good. So now you can see there's this beautiful building here. I didn't want that to get cut off. Ostrakhan Torgove. Dome. Dome. What's this cage thing on the top? That's what someone's asked in the questions. Ostrakhan. Elect. Well, that's an interesting word. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. Elektrachetske Teatre. So this is like the electric theater. Modern. The electric theater modern in Ostrakhan. Folks, if you spend a little bit of effort learning the Cyrillic letters. Russian is not that hard to learn. I I promise you on that. I didn't spend much effort. And, you know, can you learn maybe 30 letters? There's actually more letters in their alphabet. You know, you, you learned them when you were little. They weren't that hard. So if you do that, Russian's pretty phonetic. So, but the electric theater, modern. What a word. What a way to describe that. Okay, we're back to the beginning on that. I'm just going to pause. Okay, I'll just click on these. These are shopping figures. This is maybe a mall or something. Uh, not really showing up very well. Oh, I want to read the description. So there's this. What does this say? Ale so people are talking to each other. Uh, Alexander, all the old stations in a similar style. Why, why such a dome in the central part and so much space inside? A huge ceiling at a crush underneath? Maybe the way passed through the station building. Can the station have the function of maintenance and charging of trains? Oh, that's a neat idea. So we can charge electric trains, maybe? Trams? Something like that. Huge, jo huge domes with spire are not for beauty. They are indeed beautiful buildings, though. You can't argue with that. But are the, are the spires for something different other than just aesthetic? Do they charge trains? What a neat idea. That's why I'm telling you guys, you got to look at the Russian stuff. These guys are having conversations about this stuff. Lots of people in on the conversation. It's a party that I'm sure you can join, but uh, yeah, it's going on. You're not there. The central part is just as big a, a big hall in cathedrals. Oh, these look good. Okay. Volgorod. Volgorod, so I don't know. The Volga River runs through. I haven't looked that up on a map. Let's look it up on a map. Okay. Volgorod, city in Russia. Volgorod, formerly Stalingrad, is a city in the southwest Russia on the western bank of the, of the Volga River. It was the site of the World War II Battle of Stalingrad, commemorated by a huge statue. The motherland calls part of the hilltop 
Mamayev Kurgan Memorial Complex. The Panorama Museum has 360-degree paintings of the battle, as well as weapons and artifacts to the south. A large arch marks the Lenin-Volga Don shipping canal. Well, let's look it up on Google Maps. Okay, so we looked up Ostrakhan before. Ostrakhan was like down in this area, so we're not too much more northwest, although that's a huge distance, right? That's about the... No, oh, I, won't, I won't say. Um, and then Moscow's up here. So that's this is uh, Volgograd, of the Volgograd Oblast. Okay, I it came up on the side of Google Maps, but check this out. This is a local image of Volgograd. You know, they haven't dealt with this stuff yet. It still just sits there. Here's another image of it. Look at this stuff. That's beautiful. When was that built? I haven't looked it up yet. This says Voxal. Okay, anyway, we're back to Istorichesky Volnodumets uh, Facebook equivalent page. And these look like some interesting images. And again, this is in... Uh, what do we call that? Volgograd? Anyway, so this is like Tsaritsin, Tsaritsina, Vod, Vodakachka. Zhensky Gymnasia Gymnasia so that's you know a lot of old European cities had these gymnasiums I guess these are kind of like public places you can go and I think typically they were schools gymnasium really refers to schools and learning centers maybe they had you know basketball courts areas you could run around inside and play but I think they were more like schools so this is Zhenskai Gen Gymnasia. Tsaritz, oh, we already read this one. Pozharnai Kalanchka, Kalancha. Oh, it's got some more. Where are the trees? Okay, maybe this is somebody who lives locally. I don't know where this is. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This is Volsk. I guess it's along the Volga. Oh, it's in, written in French as well. Okay, so I looked it up on Google Maps. Ostrakhan was somewhere down here. That Volgograd city was somewhere over here. I mentioned Saratov in my uh, other Tartaria video. Apparently there was like a German settlement there, something like that. Anyway, this is Volsk here. So Volsk is here, Moscow is here. And I looked that up because this postcard here is Volsk. I don't know if all these pictures are a collection from Volsk. Let's have a look. No, I cut the picture off again. Nothing that impressive over here. Volga. It's on the Volga.
Okay, I tried to pause it and read read what this says, but this is in Saratov, so that was a, a different area. But pretty interesting because this looks a lot like a mosque. It even looks like it has this crescent moon on top, and also you've got uh, Arabic writing or Persian. I'm, I don't know the difference between the two. I know there is a difference. No trees. Okay, I'll zip through these pictures quickly. This was called Saratov, the Restoration. Not that impressive. No disrespect to people from there. Okay, we, we've seen this already. This is Arkhangelsk. Oh, I think we've seen this. This might be the distillery. Okay, I'll try to cover this one quickly. This is in the Lipetsk re region. These pictures weren't uh, that interesting, but he's pointing in one of them, and I can only imagine it's to this metal going through. You know, that looks machined. So how old is this? Not only that, we've got this metal rod hanging out here. Okay, so the next place I looked up on Google Maps first, this is a place called Sizran. Okay, so this is Sizran. Oh, well, that's that's kind of like a flood or a very muddy area. Sizran. Vauxhall. I don't know if that's like a train station. Gel. This is abbreviated, whatever it is. So this is Sizran, and this is like a telegraph station, I think that's what that says. This is neat, once again you've got one of these telegraph poles, or telephone poles, whatever it is. This is neat, what are they even doing here? Okay, so this is Sizran, Bolashaya, Ulitsa. So Ulitsa is the word for street. But look at all this on the top. All this caging. And okay, so this is the same city of Sizran. And unfortunately there was a fire. Fire of 1906, Sizran. These fires are always a little bit suspicious. I'm not the only one to say this. Here's somebody else leaving a comment. As always, everything is on fire. Miss, uh, Miss 
Doch the so this is like Krimzoi? This is like the Kremlin maybe? Zemli is land. So everything's devastated here. It's kind of neat how everybody who's in this image decided to turn and face the camera. There's a few more people over this way. Unfortunately, I didn't catch them. I wonder if I could almost zoom in on this one. Eh, not so well. Okay, well that's not a very good image. That's not a fire, that's like... looks like a... Uh, okay, so we saw previously a picture of like Bulshaya Street in Sizran and so this is also Bulshaya Street I might be saying that wrong it says Centralinai so like Central Chast Gor like Gor is like I think it's like Gorod like city Sizran Mejde Pesjanoi E. Bull Bullishai Ulitsam. So, yeah, this place got trashed. Antennas. I guess that means these. Okay, so these are more Sizron fire pictures. This picture is pretty wild. Here you have, like, people's stuff just sitting out in the open. This is the first time I've seen anything like this. I don't know what it says, but I'll give it a give it a try. It's cut off here. Melanitsa Bajnova Gde something I can't read. Spija eighty thousand and Zerna. I don't know what that means. cut off, but it says Boznrajenia This is in Samara so this is Gorodskoy Theatra, so this is like the city theater. Look at these things. This is in Samara. Zemsky Shkola, so that's a school. Anyway, I think I'll end it here, but uh, thank you very much to Easter Richeski, Valdumietz,
Well, no doom. Well, no doom yet. I forget how to say it. But anyway, thank you very much to the guy who put this together. And please check out uh, his YouTube channel and his Facebook page. Thanks for watching.